going to government class. In today's government class, we'll be looking at constitution and constitutionalism. What is a constitution? A constitution can be defined as a body of fundamental principles, laws, rules, regulations, conventions, and established precedents according to which a state is acknowledged to be governed and administered. The term constitution comes from the Latin word constitutio. Constitution is an essential concept which serves as the basis in which a nation, state, society, or organization is established. It is the guideline which directs and determines the activities of individuals and institutions in a country. So let's, let's, let's bring this huge constitution down to a family level. Let's bring it down to our personal levels. So if you grew up in a type of family that I grew up in, in a very large family, there were seven of us growing up. And the house chores was always an issue for us. It was always causing problems amongst us. So our mom made a roster for us. So on that, um, so we would call the roster a constitution. So on that constitution, it clearly stated the works of every one of us when we were to do the works and how we were supposed to do the work. So on the roster for washing plates, each one of us had the days we washed plates. And then on that roster, it is written below it that when you wash plates, you have to wash pots. The pot that was used to make eba, amala, semo, everything, all those ones that you have to soak overnight, it was written there that you still have to wash it. It's still your duty to wash it if it was on the day you wash plate that those pots were used. Equally, on that constitution, it was clearly stated that the back of the pot was supposed to be washed neatly. We don't, my mom usually would not like any black at the back of the pot, so you have to wash it clean. So all this was already stated on the on on the on the constitution we had in our house. If you if you if you were sweeping outside the house, you were supposed to dust all the chairs before you swept. If you are sweeping outside the house, when you sweep outside, you don't just pour the dirt on the on the parts of the house that are not cemented. You're supposed to pack the leaves first, and then you pour the sand on the part that are not cemented. So all of this was clearly written on the constitution in our house. So everybody already knew their duties. And how to do the duty, and how to perform their duties. So, a constitution is a body of fundamental principles. We already had the principles, laws, rules, regulations, conventions, or established precedents according to which a state is acknowledged to be governed or administered. So, that is what a constitution is all about. It is the guideline which directs and determines the activities of individuals and institutions in a country. So it directs whatever we are supposed to do is written in the constitution. What we are not equally supposed to do is equally stated in the constitution. The constitution of a nation is its supreme law from which the powers of the government are derived and where the rights and duties of citizens of a nation are outlined. So governmental powers are clearly stated in the constitution. The limits of, of the governmental powers are equally stated in the constitution. So where... Um, the parts that the federal that the federal government can legislate on is clearly stated in the constitution under the exclusive list. The part that the state government can legislate on is clearly stated in the constitution under the residual list. And the rights and duties of myself and yourself as individuals are equally stated in the constitution. We have a right to freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and we have a duty to pay tax. If you are earning in Nigeria, we have a duty to pay tax to the government. So these are part of the things that are clearly enshrined in the constitution. The, a constitution may be codified in a written form known as a document. If you, re, um, if you remember the example I made earlier about the constitution we had in my house growing up, it was a written, it was in a written document. So it was in, in a form that nobody could say, it's not my turn to wash plate today. Or say, mommy did not say the, that I'm supposed to wash the semo pot. No, if you was that this semo pot was used yesterday when it was your turn to wash plate. And it's clearly stated in our constitution that even if the semo pot was, if the semo pot was used on the day you were supposed to wash plate and it goes round to the next day, you are still the one supposed to wash it. So all of this was already clearly stated in the constitution. So no, Nobody could say it's not there. I thought maybe no, it's clearly written there. So a constitution may be codified in a written form known as a document. So the point I'm trying to make is the constitution we had in our house growing up was in a written form, and that is what we call a document.
It may also be in an unwritten form such as conventions, customs and principles which are not documented. Equally, when we are growing up, this caused a lot of problem in our house because at first we did not have our constitution in a written form. It was something that everybody knew. But over time we discovered that people would, you know, ourselves, between ourselves, we would change it, we would try to you know, manipulate it in such a way that it favors us. So one person will wake up and say, mommy did not say we are supposed to wash the pot that was used in the day. If the pot goes to the next day, the next person washing is supposed to wash it. And then whether that the things were already getting twisted up because it was not clearly written. We did not have it in a written form. So it was like, it was easy to be manipulated. It was prone to manipulations by, um, you know, by myself and my siblings. So documents that are in unwritten form, they are called conventions. Customs and principles which are not documented. Either written or unwritten, the main objective of, of a constitution is to establish the major organs of government, to allocate powers to the organs, and to outline the rights and the duties of the citizens, and the relationship between the government, the individuals, and all institutions in the state. So, the summary or the main objective of having a constitution is firstly to establish the main organs of government. What are the organs of government we have in Nigeria? We have the legislative, the executive and the judiciary. What are the functions of these organs of government? The legislative is to make law, the judiciary is to implement, the, is to interpret the law and the executive is to implement and make policies, to make and implement policies. So, the constitution clearly states the functions of this of each major organ of government. It allocates power to these organs. The legislative have their power and they have places where they cannot um and they have places where their power must not cannot extend to. Their powers have boundaries, it has limits. So equally the executive, their powers have limits. The executive cannot wake up today and say they want to make law. No, their power ends in making and implementing policies for the people. The judiciary cannot wake up today and say they want to change the law. No, their power ends in interpreting the law and melting out punishments to offenders. So each arm of government, um, they have their functions clearly stated in the constitution and the constitution equally allocates powers to these organs of government. Equally, another major objective of the constitution is that it states our rights as citizens of Nigeria. You have a right, I have a right, is equal in the constitution. We have a right to life. So nobody can, can wake up one morning and say they want to take our lives illegally. So we have a right to life, we have a right to freedom of speech, we have a right to freedom of expression. In Nigeria, we, if you are 18 years and above, you have a right to vote. And um, if you are um, 33, depending on the ages for contesting for um, elections in state and federal levels, um, um, in state and federal levels equally, there are ages that you have to get to. If you attain this age, if you have the qualifications that are clearly stated in the constitution, you have a right to equally say you want to vie for a political office. So our rights and duties as citizens are there. We have a right to pay tax if you are earning in Nigeria. So um, these are one of the things, main objective of the constitution. It equally states the relationship between the government and individuals and other institutions in the state. What is the relationship be between the government and myself? The government has to make sure that we are okay, we get the basic amenities we need, and we are living um, life in a, we are living a quality life. The relationship between, between the government and the institution of the state too. The, the government has to make sure that the institutions are running well in order to ensure that the people are living quality lives. So all of these um, things are clearly enshrined in the constitution. In the modern political organizations, constitutions of countries are codified and compiled in a documented form, which gives room for references and necessary amendments. So in modern political organizations, constitutions of countries are usually codified and compiled in a written document, that is, they are written. The, um, the, the constitution of countries are usually written. And what a written um, what a written constitution does is it gives room for referencing for example remember the the example i made earlier about the constitution we had in my house and i said earlier that when we did not have it in a written form it was prone to manipulation because we didn't have something we could refer back to that this is what mommy said that day so it was like over time it could be prone to manipulation but once the constitution was written clearly pasted on the fridge and in the kitchen whenever you say no mommy did not say we tell you go back there and check, mommy said. 
So that 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 is one of the advantages of a written constitution. So it gives room for references and for necessary amendments. So when we go back there, we find that, that okay, this thing is not working. The washing of court is not working well with us. What can we do to you know give room for it to be easier for we to wash it? It gives room for amendments equally. So practically, India has the largest written constitution of any sovereign country in the world. The constitution contains 444 articles, 12 schedules, 94 amendments, with 117,369 words. On the other hand, the United States of America has the so shortest written constitution, which contains 7 articles and 27 amendments so far. With this, we've come to the end of this class. In the course of this class, we talked about constitution extensively. And I want to see you at the next class. Yes, you. I'll see you at the next class. Mm -hmm.